it's almost like a funeral for me every day. I, I, I'm sure a lot of people think the same thing. A lot of people go through their daily lives and and uh, they know it's back there, it's in their subconscious, but they don't think about it every day. To me, every there's not a day it doesn't go by that I don't think about 9-11. I was at the University of Missouri and we're just getting ready to go into a staff meeting and uh, one of the other coaches called me in the office, his office, and he had on ABC or NBC or one of those channels and a plane had just crashed into uh, uh, one of the Twin Towers. And at the time, we just thought it was you know, an accident and a plane had had no idea you know, exactly what it was. Went into the staff meeting, came back out, and another one had hit. And, uh, and obviously, you know, the rest of the day was kind of a blur. Um, you know, it's a morning I'll never forget. The tragic events of September 11th affected every American in a different way. Some, like Dave Hamilton, were called to battle. Others, like Dave Christensen, tried to cope by continuing their normal routines. I remember going out recruiting sometime after that and landing in San Diego and walking through the airport and there were uh, National Guards with AK-47s. And uh, you know, it, was just, it was a sight I never thought I'd see living in you know, the United States of America. When he received his first head coaching job eight years later, one of Christensen's top priorities was to develop a tradition within his program to honor the men and women who have been risking their lives while fighting for our country. And he did so by naming his special teams after the Army Special Forces Unit. We started calling them Special Forces from the day I got here. We don't look at this as, you know, the, the job that they're doing. Theirs is life and death, ours is a game. But there are a lot of things that are that, that are in common with what we do with our special forces and this, as far as the size of the unit, the commitment, the selection of people that are in it. Uh, the special forces caught wind of that and uh, developed a relationship with us. And that's where the lifelong friendship started between the coach and the Green Beret. They train as they fight, same as we do. They kid up before they actually get ready to play a game or what I consider going to battle. You know, and so to build, to, to try and establish an integrity system to where the guys need to develop a brotherhood and a sense of ownership to each other, I mean, it's just the same thing as what Special Forces founded on. I mean, we fight for, not just for God and country and family, and we fight for our brothers in arms, we fight for our, our unit, you know, and we fight for our way of life. The first Special Forces units were adopted in 1952 at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Nearly 60 years later, they still protect our freedom. The soldiers are described as team players rather than individual heroes. But to Coach Christensen, Dave Hamilton is all that and a lot more. I care you know, deeply about you know, Hambone and uh, uh, we've developed a great friendship relationship over the last three years. And uh, you learn a lot about uh, you know, what, what our servicemen are when you meet Dave Hamilton. He's a true warrior. Um, you know, he's, he's a very, very dedicated, loyal, a person, uh, you know, I sleep better at night knowing that we have a, a whole army full of guys like Dave Hamilton. Now, talking to Dave yesterday, I asked him what you meant to him, and Dave's like, he means the world to me. He's yes. a warrior, he's a terrific human being, he sleeps better at night knowing there's people like you protecting our freedom. Oh, What's wow. that mean to you? Wow. Right, should I do? Get me upset here, man? <laughs> Feeling's mutual, Dave. It really is. Um, Wow, that breaks my heart, man. It makes me feel good. Yeah, I love Dave to death. Hey, you know, uh, I have no words, man. You know, he's just, uh, like I say, he's a big brother to me. Christensen's admiration and bond with Dave Hamilton has trickled on down to his players. His impact on the team can be felt simply from the words of the guys in the locker room. And this guy has gone on five tours. He's risked his life. Um, he's been in numerous surgeries. And when, he, when you have somebody like that that is still caring um, for a program like the University of Wyoming and still having us in, uh, in his thoughts um, while he's in a tough time recovering from his surgery, um, you can't say enough about that, about his character and about the kind of person that he is. And it's an honor just to know that we have people like that defending our country. Over the summer, Hamilton underwent numerous procedures for injuries he suffered while answering the call of duty. Surgery so serious, they took him away from the team and one of his closest friends. He's went through some hardships this year. Uh, he's had uh, some surgeries to take care of his back and spine from an injury he had serving when he fell out of a helicopter. And, uh, you know, he was down in uh, San Antonio having surgery. And his only goal uh, was to, to recover and be able to run out with our football team on September 3rd. I don't care if you're special forces, if you play ball, you can get hurt in a car wreck, you know. There's nothing more 
I guess, uh, demoralizing and humbling to kind of get your, your sails knocked out of you from an injury. And it inspires me to get better, to be stronger. Because if I'm showing a sign of weakness, then, you know, it doesn't pass. And I know guys know different, but it, it makes me feel like I'm not doing my best. So that's why uh, even after this injury now, it's, it's kind of killing me because it's taking a little bit longer to heal than what I expected. It's the biggest thing in the world for him. You know, and he just wanted to make sure I kept letting the guys know that, you know, he'll be with us uh, when we open the season. And true to his mission, Hamilton was there. Another firefight, you know the deal. Knock this one out, man. He even joined the team in their pregame prayer. Father, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The same words that many Americans held close to their heart after the tragedies that brought Hamilton and the Cowboys together nearly 10 years later. All right, guys, you know what time it is, right? Yeah, Let's man. do this. Hell yeah, baby. Great news, man. Back from death, we got Hamilton's <laughs> ass running out with us tonight. We got to do this. All right, let's do this. Yeah, one goal, and that's to run out with your ass on the third. I told you guys two weeks ago he'd be here, and here he is. Back by his brother's side. I'm a cowboy for life now.